Hey YouTube, Network Whiz Kid here, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at how we can configure the Cisco Umbrella Windows Active Directory connector. And we're going to do this using the script method on a domain controller, hence the reason why this part of the video is called part one. Like we always do, we will start off with the main points that I have picked out as part of my ongoing efforts for the CCI security. So these are the main points, as I say, that I've picked out. They, there is probably others, there is others, and I will include the links to uh, relevant and useful locations at the end of this slide. So the first one is that the script will run on the domain controller or the domain controllers if you have more than one. The Windows Active Directory connector can be installed on a non-DC server. So as I said at the start of this video, there's two methods to installing a Windows AD connector. One method is using the script on the domain controller and a second method if you don't want to install it on the domain controller is by downloading some software which you then can install on a domain joined uh, but non-domain controller server. Scripts run the pre-checks before finishing the setup so when you uh, install or run the script uh, a number of pre-checks will be performed before the configuration is implemented and completed. And if you do not um, have some of those pretexts, the installation uh, could stop. And we'll take a look at that later on in the lab when we um, run this demonstration. Before configuring the script or uh, before implementing the script rather, you must have a username configured with the domain. So the default uh, username in the script is open DNS underscore connector. You can change that, but you would have to modify the script itself. That user, um, the, the password for that user cannot expire. The password cannot include backslashes, quotations, chevron brackets, or colons. And if deployed across multiple domains, the password, the password must also remain the same. The user must also be a member of the following groups, enterprise read only, event log readers, and that's for environments where uh, virtual appliances are used. So in our demonstration, and we'll take a look at the topology in a moment, we are using VA, so we will add this user to the enterprise log readers. And then also distributed com users will also do the same. Uh, for that. The steps to configuring the Windows Active Directory connector via the script is pretty straightforward. There's just the prerequisites um, that I mentioned uh, on the previous slide and I've also included a link to um, the actual prerequisites recommendations um, that you can follow just to make sure that all the prereqs are covered for your environment. That link will be shared in the video description at the end. So first of all we need to download the actual Windows uh, Active Directory connector. We then need to create the required username. We then can perform network checks to ensure that the connector, VAs and server can communicate with the Umbrella API. So for instance, if you are running a firewall or if your connector server uh, VAs are behind the firewall, you will need to allow um, traffic to uh, from those devices uh, in order to communicate with the Umbrella API. The list of uh, rules or the list of ports that are required can be found on the Cisco Umbrella documentation. Number four, we then run the Windows Active Di Directory connector script. 
And last of all, we verify that the connector is registered with Cisco umbrella in the dashboard. So for our demonstration today, we are going to be using a topology like the one you can see on screen now. So essentially what we have is we have a client and although we're not focusing on the client today, we're just focusing on the actual uh, install via the script. Essentially what would happen is all DNS requests would pass to the umbrella VAs, the virtual appliances, which then in turn um, will either direct those requests if they're locally to the DNS server inside or locally or if the requests are external then they will pass them off to um, the Cisco Umbrella Cloud. The synchronization uh, between Umbrella and uh, the connector is also performed and likewise the synchronization between the connector and the VAs is also performed in the background. So if we jump now into our lab environment we can start the process. So logged into your umbrella GUI we need to first navigate to deployments configuration sites and active directory and then what we need to do is we need to upper right corner press download and we should have two options for the active directory components so we'll go ahead and we'll download that Okay, now that that downloaded, what we'll do now is we will create the Active Directory user. So if I just open my users. So new user. And our username is going to be open DNS underscore connector. And just give it a first name and a last name of open DNS. Or in fact we'll do Cisco Umbrella. And as I said in the presentation, the password will never expire. So we set that. We'll also set that. And we will confirm a password. Okay, so that uh, user has been created now. So if we just click on that user and we look at the account, we can see the account logon name. Now we need to add that user to the relevant groups. So we'll just go to member of, add. And I'll type in enterprise read only. Okay, that's fine. So we'll okay on that so we can see that that one's being added now. We'll also add event log readers. We'll add that one and distributed com users let's search on that one there we go so we've added them to as well press ok and then we'll apply that and press ok so to run the script you need elevated privileges and we also need to add CS script 
at the start of the uh, PowerShell command. So what we'll do is we'll open PowerShell with elevated privileges. So I'm running this as an administrator. Okay, so now that's loaded. What we'll do is we will type CS script space and then we'll navigate to our file that we downloaded from Cisco Umbrella, which is here. You can see on screen. And we'll drag that across into PowerShell and then we'll press enter Oops. on the PowerShell. That starts to run now as you can see and now it's asking if we want to auto configure this domain, uh, the, the, the configuration for the domain controller. So I'll go ahead and I'll press yes. But before I can, before I do that, we can see that the server that I'm using at the minute is server 2019. We can see its IP address as well as its domain. You can see firewall, whether it's enabled or not. And we can see if the active directory user exists, which it does. So that's the user that we created as well. So we'll proceed. Uh, we can also see that distributed com is a member of an event log reader is a member of. The both of those are set to true. So we'll proceed with this now. So it's configuring the system. So it sets the remote admin permissions on the firewall, WMI permissions, remote desktop permissions, and it says oh, off config complete in full. Would you like to register the domain controller? So what this is going to do is going to do an API call to uh, Cisco Umbrella and it's going to register this domain controller. So we'll say yes. As you can see there, it's registering with the cloud. We can see registration has been successful and it's updating the status in the cloud. And you can see there that uh, the update has been successful. So now if we go back to our umbrella GUI, you can see now that it's displayed as a domain controller in our Cisco umbrella. We can see the name, the IP address, and we can then assign it to a specific site if we wanted to as well. So that's essentially the configuration for configuring the Cisco Umbrella Windows Active Directory connector using the script method on a domain controller. So just to finish off, I have some useful links here. I will also paste these in the description of the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me in the comment section of this video or any of my social media platforms. Please, if you found this video useful, subscribe, like, and if you want to stay up to date with the latest videos that I produce, you can go ahead and click the notifications tab and every time I upload new content, you will be notified. Until next time, thanks for watching, goodbye.